I'm not really sure when I finally figured it out that more times than not, I felt undeserving. In truth, I kind of think I was raised to feel undeserving, not by my parents per se, but by, but by society as a whole. I think I was raised to believe that I didn't quite deserve to have what I wanted. Rather, I was supposed to be thankful for what I had, share it with others, and frankly, be satisfied already. <laughs> well, none of these thoughts are wrong or bad. In fact, they're admirable and, and definitely they're true. Gratitude for what you have is paramount to being satisfied and attracting more of what you want. But when these beliefs, these beliefs of being undeserving, if they're left unchecked and allowed to be the only thoughts you have, you're left with a sort of resignation, a life that is less than, a life that is not well lived, a life that is maybe lackluster at best miserable at worst. Well, I vaguely remember a night I was sitting on my back porch in Asheville talking to someone about my life when I said something like this. Oh, it's like I'm taking a bunch of crumbs and I'm smushing them together and I'm pretending I have a cookie. I was talking about men, I think, about men and dating and about my tendency to take way less than I wanted, somehow morph those things in my mind to be better than they actually were. And I called it amazing when in fact, what I was receiving, and I should point out accepting, were really crumbs, little dribbles of the whole thing that I truly desired. Well, in today's podcast, I'm going to talk about this phenomenon of accepting less and how we lie to and convince ourselves that the life we have right now is good enough, that we're happy enough, when in fact, we really and truly want a whole lot more. Hello, I'm Sherry Honeycutt from Life by Design, and I'm so excited to share with you some tips for creating the beautiful life you've always intended. For those of you who are like me some days and go, oh, is this as good as it's going to get? You're who I've created this podcast for. And I promise that what you gain from listening to this 10 to 20 minutes every week is going to work faster than therapy, be more permanent than plastic surgery, and way more satisfying than mindlessly shopping at Target. On this podcast, I talk with you about ways to design your beautiful life, both on the inside and the out. You can learn more about me and my work at SherryHoneycutt.com, C-H-E-R-I-H-O-N-E-Y-C-U-T-T.com. I've got lots of stuff there for you to see. So for now, grab a cup of coffee or tea or water, and let's get started clearing your mind, clearing the clutter, and clearing a path to the life that you've always intended. Well, are you squishing to gather a bunch of crumbs and calling it a cookie? Another way to look at this is, are there areas in your life that are really unsatisfying, but you're telling yourself that it's okay, that you have plenty or that you're fine? You see, it's not accepting the what is part that worries me. We all have parts of our lives that we want to be better. We can all say, I want more vacations or I want more money or I want better health. And it's fine to be happy with what you have right now while you're crafting a plan to make things better. That's that's good. That's normal. It's when we have a whole lot less of what we want and we're telling ourselves that we're just fine without it. That's when it makes me worried. Let me give you an example. Let's use relationships as an example. I can't tell you how many friends and clients who come in with a story that their unsatisfying relationship, one that barely meets their needs, is actually just fine. They tell me example after example of where they're not getting their needs met. They tell themselves that they're fine because they shift around the facts. They massage the details or worse yet, they say something like, oh, it'll never change. And then they settle. I hear this kinds of stories over and over and over. They're resigned to whatever their situation is. And they believe that it's as good as it's gonna get. This happens really in all aspects of our lives, not just in relationships, but that's just an example. Well, do you remember that movie as it was called As Good As It Gets? It had Jack Nicholson, Helen Hunt, and Greg Kinnear. 
Nicholson plays an obsessive compulsive asshole (laughs) and his life is pretty tough and he's bitter and he's trapped and he behaves like an abused dog that's been left on a chain outside for years. (laughs) He barks and he growls at everyone, telling them basically to keep their distance. And there's a scene where he walks into the psychiatrist's office, or I guess it's out of the psychiatrist's office, and he looks at the people in the waiting room and he says, what if this is good as it's going to get? It's a really powerful scene, or it was for me, one that made me feel kind of hopeless. Maybe it was the whole point of the movie, I guess, to understand that this was hopeless and the pain of that phrase But fortunately, in the movie, Nicholson's character decided that the effort, and it was going to take a lot of effort for this tortured soul of his to allow and work for more of what he wanted, he had to decide it was worth it. He somehow sees there's a cookie out there played by Helen Hunt, and that there's something he wants and he's willing to stop lying to himself that he's happy as the surly curmudgeon with no friends. That's what I'm talking about. So how do we know if we've resigned ourselves, if we're lying to ourselves that what we have is just fine? Well, let's start right now with what I'm about to say. Get ready, because I want you to be ready to hear what I'm about to say, because here we go. Are you ready? It's okay to want more. It's okay to want something different. It's okay to declare that what you have right now is not meeting your needs. It's okay. Now, I'm not advocating you end your marriage or you just go quit your job or throw in the towel. Rather, I'm suggesting that you look into the mirror and you just check in. Are you truly happy and satisfied with the current state of affairs? Or are you lying to yourself? So back to my story on the back porch and my crumb cookie revelation. (laughs) Around this same time, I was in a relationship with a man that was, frankly, he was one of my crumbs. (laughs) And I gained some positive things from our relationship for sure. But in truth, I was amplifying those positive things and completely ignoring the negative. It was a strategy that I think I perfected. It was a lie. Anyway, Anyway, ironically, he helped point out how I was doing this very same thing with my story of my ex-husband. Gosh, I sure hope neither of these guys listen to this. But anyway, my story. The one that I told myself, the one that I told myself and the world was that my ex-husband was an amazing father, a devoted and wonderful man. I was so committed to having an ex-husband that was awesome that it prevented me from seeing the times, which were more than I really wanted to see, where he was not so hot. Times where his needs superseded mine, which was a lot. Times where he stonewalled me when I was trying to work on some issue with the kids. Times where he was rude and cruel. I would let those slide. No, no, I wouldn't even let him slide, y'all. I wouldn't even see him sometimes. I wouldn't even see those things because they were counter to the story that I had in my mind. My story and my goal were to, and I quote, have the best divorce ever. (laughs) I wanted to be the person who could get a divorce, but be the best at it. (laughs) And I don't know where this came from, but that was what I wanted. However, to do this, I had to lie to myself. I had to quit telling myself that my ex-husband was a cookie. In fact, he was a crumb and he was throwing me a bunch of crumbs. I was taking crumb and calling it a cookie. Now, my friends knew they were crumbs. They knew that my ex-husband was throwing me crumbs, but I didn't. That is until one day this other man, remember the other crumb I was telling you about? He threw the bullshit flag on the play. He said, quote, something like this. You tell me all the time what an awesome father your ex is. But what about this? And what about that? And what about this? And what about that? And he gave several examples. And for the first time. I saw my role in creating this fantasy, this falsehood. It was a huge turning point. And I felt simultaneously enlightened and I felt a kick in the stomach. My fantasy balloon had just been busted and it hurt, but I also felt healthier. 
it can feel really crappy <laughs> when you discover that you have been willingly accepting only crumbs. And you can get pissed or you can get depressed, you can get angry, you can beat yourself up. But if you're reasonably healthy, or in my case, had a lot of other friends who helped me unpack this realization that I had, you see the real issues are the lies you've been telling yourself, not the crumbs, but the lies you've been telling yourself and those you can fix. So when you stop lying to yourself, quit calling crumbs a cookie, it can be so empowering. And once I saw the crumbs in that part of my life, I started to notice other crumbs in my life, one being the man who had pointed out my ex-husband's crumbs. I began saying, I want the whole cookie. I really want the whole cookie. It became my mantra. I walked through my life and said, oh, look, there's a crumb. Wait, there's a crumb. Oh, look, there's another crumb. I want the cookie. (laughs) And I had been accepting a lot of crumbs, y'all, and calling them a cookie. I was doing it in so many aspects of my life. And like I said, it was a bit depressing until I remembered that I could say no. And when I did this, better things began showing up. Let me give you an example. I began releasing all of the would-be romantic relationships and friendships that were crumbs. I just began to go, let go, no more crumbs, go away, no more crumbs. And when I claimed I wanted the whole cookie in a romantic partner, he walked into my kitchen on Black Friday, 2014, and he kissed me. I found the love of my life and he found me. And he's the whole giant sized cookie. And I don't have to compromise on a single thing I want in the relationship. Not one damn thing. I don't. I'm not making this up. It's true. (laughs) My whole cookie relationship with Mark has become evidence for me now that I can have that in every other aspect of my life. That is when I tell myself the truth. I don't have to settle. I can have everything I want if I tell myself the truth. And you can too. Now, I cannot be a prima ballerina at age 57, but guess what? I don't want to. But I can have everything that I truly want be it healthy friendships, a breathe easy financial future, fabulous trips, a clean house, healthy plants, whatever it is, if I really want it, and I tell myself the truth about it and quit accepting less than I can have it. But I can only have those things when I'm honest about the times that I don't have them. And I quit pretending that what I have is enough. When I truly claim what I want, and I can have it. Okay, that's the deal. And it begins when I claim that I want the whole cookie. When I call a crumb, a crumb. Now I don't berate the crumb, don't berate the crumb, but don't lie anymore and pretend it's a cookie when it's really just a crumb. Well, I'm asking you, are you ready to design a whole cookie life? Are you ready to have the whole damn cookie? I sure hope so. Thank you so much for taking the time to listen today. And I sure hope you found a pearl or two to help you start living a whole cookie life right now. Something to help you create a more beautiful life. And I hope you're subscribed so that this podcast will come right to you. I'd like to point out that the next couple of episodes, the next couple of episodes will continue on this theme of deserving and not settling. So I hope you'll stay in touch. Specifically, I'd like to invite you to go to my website, sherryhoneycutt.com, and do two things. First, download your Ideal Life Starter Kit. I've got a guided meditation as well as a couple of other tools that will help you do both a bird's eye view of your life and know exactly how to get started. All you have to do is go to sherryhoneycutt.com and click on Get Started Now. Secondly, I'd really love to hear from you. Leave me a comment or tell me something that this podcast has prompted you to do. I would really love to hear that. I can't wait to hear from you. And finally, please pass me around. (laughs) So tell your friends to give me a listen. Let other people know about this little podcast that I've started. That helps me do more of what I love to do, more of what makes my heart sing. But lastly, I want to leave you with this. I want you to always remember you can have a beautiful life. You can. You just have to clear your mind, clear your clutter, 
so you can clear a path to the life that you've always intended. Until next time.